there. Thanks for tuning in to Vision, the show all about the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm Lindsay Morshauser Poe, your host. And this edition, we are going all distance learning. So we are talking about um, distance education in general and also some specific programs. And I'd like to welcome our first guest to the show, Marion Montgomery Chancellor. She is the manager at the Center for Distance Education. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for having me. Absolutely. So we've got a lot going on in arts and sciences with distance education. Can you touch on some of it and specifically the interdisciplinary studies program that we offer? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have um, several programs that are available online through the College of Arts and Sciences. We have two undergraduate programs. One is the Bachelor of Science in Geosciences with the Broadcast and Operational Meteorology, as you're familiar right. with. And we have the Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies, which is a very popular program. It's one of our largest programs that we have at the undergraduate level. Wonderful. Why is it so popular? I don't mean to cut you off, but that's an interesting tidbit. Yeah, it really is. I think it's because a lot of people have realized that they have, maybe they started a degree, they didn't finish a degree, and now they're in the workforce and they have to have a degree either to keep their job, mm -hmm. maybe to get promoted, okay. or maybe they want to receive some other type of an event of advancement. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe they're looking for a raise, but maybe they're also looking to go to, into a master's degree. And with the master's degree, that opens up a lot more doors as well. Okay. And so those are our two undergrad programs. Mm -hmm. We also have some graduate we programs. We do. We as do. Well. We have the teachers uh, in biology, the masters of, Geosci masters of general biology, and we have the master of sciences and geosciences with teachers of geosciences, environmental geosciences, and applied meteorology as well. Right, a mouthful. Uh, the, it is <laughs> a and mouthful then, too. And we have two certificates also with the geosciences okay, programs yes. as well. Popular, but interdisciplinary studies, I think that's interesting because in our conversation kind of leading up to this interview, you talked about how the provost kind of has a little bit of an initiative for people living in the state of Mississippi. Can you talk on that or her ideas on that? Absolutely. Um, what, what we understand is that, that Dr. Bonner uh, is very much interested in distance education. Mm -hmm. And her thoughts are if, if somebody in the state of Mississippi has not completed a degree and they can't come to the Starkville or the Meridian campuses, then why not complete a degree online with MSU through distance education? Right. It's the same rigorous standards. The classes have the same rigors. They go through the same approval processes. They have the same faculty in most cases as main campus students. So there really is no difference. And I think that's an important thing that you're getting the faculty that are teaching on campus through those online classes. I think that makes people who can't come here think, hey, this is the same quality that those students that are on campus are getting, mm -hmm. right? Um, what kind of students, switching gears a little bit, are successful in an online environment? I would say those who are highly motivated. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, our students are typically, they're non-traditional, which means they're over the age of 24. They probably have a job. About 85% of our students are 100% employed. Okay. And they have family, so they don't have a lot of time for that, you know, like I'm going to come to campus, take one class here, one class there. They want to do it online. Okay. And I think that they are highly motivated. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of the conversations we have with students are they, that they say, I wish I would have done it this way the first time. You know, I wish I was this much more engaged because right. they are. They're much more engaged because they care. They want to get it done. Right. And someone sitting at home, I, I, I kind of, you know, looked through the website a little bit and found an assessment mm -hmm. that you can take. Um, if you're sitting at home and think, well, I don't know, maybe I have the qualities to take an online class or two or get a, a degree. What is that test like and is it pretty accurate? It is. It's the Smarter Measure Assessment and it's a distance education readiness assessment tool. Okay. And so it's not like a make or break you know, test right. that says, no, you're not going to be very good at right. distance education. It's more of like, these are your opportunities, these are your strengths, these are some challenges you might want to work on. Okay. And so it's very helpful. It's free. It's on our website. And it's on the website. Mm -hmm. You can find it. I found it, so mm -hmm. it's easy to find. Um, Speaking of challenges, and not that I want to highlight that at all, but what are some of the challenges that students face with online programs? I don't know necessarily that students face many okay. challenges. I, I would say that um, for, for us, some of the things that we're working on is, is helping faculty to offer distance education okay. online. I think that it's an exciting time at MSU. Our provost is very exciting. She, she's an interested in growth and, and enrollment growth. And I think that a lot of people see distance as a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And there are so many wonderful things that they can do uh, with these distance programs. So we're out meeting with department heads, deans, faculty, trying to help them bring some of these programs online so that we can grow mm -hmm. and so that we can you know, offer more 
more programs so that we can grow. Wonderful. And, and also, we, you know, we do have the general education courses through right. arts and sciences as well. Right. I did want to mention that. Absolutely. General yeah. education, we've got interdisciplinary studies and mm -hmm. several programs through geosciences and biological sciences, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, check those out. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. on the show today. Thanks for having me. Wonderful information. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay, stick with us. We'll have more coming up after this quick break. Have you ever thought about what it would take to eliminate one of the most dreaded illnesses of the year? At Mississippi State University, we're dreaming big, fast on the heels of scientific discoveries that will lead to the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of flu and other illnesses. For researchers, the biggest challenge is keeping pace with viruses that are constantly evolving to become more contagious. But at Mississippi State, we have the upper hand. Our scientists are working with teams around the world to predict when and where new viruses will emerge, combining forces to create flu vaccines before epidemics actually hit. That's because as a premier research university, we believe it is our responsibility to help improve the lives of those around us. And we're working hard to help create a world where the flu is something children will one day read about in history books. It's hard to fathom. By the year 2050, Earth will be home to 3 billion more people than today. And with rising populations and dwindling resources, one of the most pressing questions is a stark one. How will we feed everyone? At Mississippi State University, we're preparing a meal table where there's a seat for all of us. As one of the nation's leading research universities, our scientists are deploying technology to enhance crop production developing vaccines to protect aquaculture, working to boost water resources here at home and in communities around the globe. And by partnering with the League of International Universities and the United Nations, we're guaranteeing that global food security is a priority for years to come. As our world grows, so do the challenges. But when it comes to how we will feed everyone, rest assured, Mississippi State has all options on the table. Thanks for sticking with us and welcome back to Vision. We're gonna stick with our theme and talk about a specific program in distance education. And I wanna welcome our second guest, Dr. Alan Marcus. He's from the Department of History and he wears lots of hats and I would probably mess them up if I told you all of them. But he's here to specifically talk about the diversity certificate program offered through distance education, correct? That's correct. So, what is this certificate program? It is an attempt um, of many different departments and programs, four altogether, to put together some sort of online course that will allow people in the workforce okay. to be better, better able to manage various um, situations and conditions where there are people of difference of all sorts in there. Okay. Um, what kind of courses? do professional students take when they sign up for this certificate okay. program? First of all, this is, this is a um, graduate certificate. Okay. So you have to have a bachelor's degree. Have you have to, to be have admitted bachelors. to the um, graduate office. Good to know. Um, <laughs> and you have to write a little essay saying what you want to do with it when you get done. Okay. Um, but basically, these are the kind of people, we looked at this originally to talk to big corporations. We looked at a lot of this to be for MBA students who would be managers. And we found a, a bunch of people who we didn't think would be interested, but turned out to be very interested, which are people who work for human resource management. Okay, that is interesting. You kind of are touching on some of my questions. Um, so what are the different classes? I, I read, you know, history, gender studies, African-American studies. What's kind of the course load for people like you just talked about who are interested in getting this? Okay. You have um, four different courses. You have two courses to choose from in each of the four disciplines. The disciplines are history, African-American studies, gender studies, and sociology. Okay. The two um, American, the two history courses, one is specializes in African-American history, one specializes in women's, uh, women's history. The sociology course, one is the sociology of gender, one is the sociology of race, right. how people of various different groups work together. Gender studies and African-American studies are more mixed. Okay. Those are both, by definition, interdisciplinary programs. 
Right. And as interdisciplinary programs, they try to take a whole myriad, a bunch of different approaches and put them together. But in any case, they're talking about the workforce, the work environment, and what goes on within a studio or within a um, factory or within a, um, just a management business. Right, kind of like um, business communication, like bettering your communication because of the diversity in well, the workplace. Well, it, it, it also, it, that's, that's part of it. Also part, of it. part, it means that people don't unintentionally um, do things that they should, that they didn't know better than right. to do. Right, okay. Um, we talked to some large firms originally, one mm -hmm. of which was UPS. And UPS oh. um, was very interested in us. And up to that point, they had um, always sent their, student, their managers to six different places in America, each for six weeks, each which had a st stereotypical population. Okay. So they chose Detroit because it's a large African-American population. Mm -hmm. They chose to send them for six weeks to San Francisco because they're their large gay and lesbian population. Right. And they, they sent them to, uh, I think, Memphis for Southern, and they sent them all over to get this different experiences. Interesting. Well, we thought we could do this um, at least better, actually. Right. With, by teaching them broader parameters in dealing with knowledge rather than dealing with firsthand, face-to-face -face sorts of things, which they could learn later, of course. That's interesting. Um, you kind of touched on you know, what was missing. That was one of my questions, and that seems to be it. A program that offered this kind of experience more um, finite, I guess. Yeah. yeah. How long is the program? So if someone's sitting at home and thinks, wow, that sounds interesting, that would really benefit me, is this something that is rigorous time-wise, or you can kind of take as, as long as you want to do the program? It has no limits. Okay. Most people take one or two courses a semester and they get done in one to two years. One to two years. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you kind of touched on this as well, but I, I want to make sure people hear, you know, specific companies, specific industries, are they rewarding or I guess that's the right word, rewarding their workers for taking this program? Well, often specific industries pay their workers, pay the, the, the freight so the workers can take this. Okay. And they're paying their workers because from their perspective, the premium is better. That by paying this and having better, more efficient workers who won't make the same kind of mistakes, who won't get the companies sued, mm -hmm. who will know how to do things more efficiently, right. is worth whatever it's it worth cost. It. Wonderful information. Thank you so much for joining us today. The diversity certificate program sounds like a great opportunity for professionals out there across the country. Um, and that's all we have time for in this edition of Vision. We'll see you next time.